they would do those kicks in the in the line with their arms around each other. And um, I, I I remember being so struck by reading that. Like, did it occur to me that people might have, if you were all the same height, you would still have different diff, different uh, lengths between how long your shin is. Right or how long your femur bone, that bone, that giant bone in your thigh, it, it didn't occur to me that that might be different, but it is. And so why I'm off on this long story while you're in child's pose is because what I'm thinking is, you, you know, how 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 silly it is that we would try to compare ourselves to other people, and we do it all the time, but we're not the Radio City Music Hall Rockettes. We're we're just a bunch of people doing yoga in our own bodies with our own length of shin and femur, length of arm, length of, of, of muscles, of hamstrings, you know. And so um, please give yourself latitude and take into account, like, did you get your second COVID shot yesterday and you're feeling a little bit rough today? Did you take the whole week off from any exercise and you feel wonderful and energetic? Whatever it is, did you get some bad news, right? We only have so much energy and bad news can impact us too. Push up onto your hands and knees. Bring your hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips, and go on, make your way into some cat cows. So taking all of those things into account, inhaling as you lift your gaze and your tailbone, exhaling as you tuck your tailbone and chin, rounding through your spine, pushing up through your shoulder blades, and then inhale, drop your stomach, lift your head. Noticing, right, I'm moving, here's how my body is showing up. Maybe committing to yourself that you're gonna work with yourself rather than against yourself. Come on back to neutral, walk your hands a little bit forward, maybe one or two palm lengths, and then tuck your toes Lift your knees off the ground, high plank. And then adjust your hands so that your palms are underneath your shoulders and your body is in a strong, straight, high plank. And then from here, without moving your hands or your feet, at least to start with, lift up through your stomach muscles, pushing into your arms at the same time, coming into downward facing dog. Let your heels sink toward the mat, no agenda to get your heels on the mat. Some of you will have your heels on the mat. And again, that's a difference in, in your body and the way you use your body, right? I was running in Garden of the Gods this morning. And I remember when I first started really getting into yoga, and I was, I was also a runner at that time, and um, needing to, to, to reconcile that certain ways that I use my body through running impact my yoga practice and make it probably impossible that I will ever be able to do certain things unless I give up running. And needing to make choices about how do I want to use my body and how do I want to treat myself. I know we got a long hold here. That's okay. You can drop your knees if you need to and then come on back up into down dog when you're ready. How do I want to use my body, right? So yes, I do want to run, I love running, and I want to practice yoga, I love practicing yoga. And I need to realize that the running is gonna impact the way my yoga practice is. And then there's another choice around that too. Take a bunch of baby steps, walk to the top of your mat, the hanging rag doll. So here we are in a, in a shape that for me, if I didn't run, I'd be able to straighten my knees more instead of needing to bend my knees to protect my hamstrings, which are always a little bit tight from running. And so here's the other choice, right? Instead of saying, I'm bad, I can't do this, I'm looking at somebody else and they're doing this better, whatever better means, I say, you know, I'm making choices and the choices show up in my body and that's okay. I, I made that, I did it deliberately, and I'm fine with it. Roll up to standing. So can you be fine with the choices you make? And if you catch yourself saying, oh, my knees aren't as straight as that other person, you get to stand and roll your shoulders up and back and down, letting your head be the last thing to come up. 
and then lift your head. Lift your head all the way up. Tilt your chin up. And then you might shrug your shoulders up to protect your neck at first. And then maybe begin to experiment with allowing your shoulders to come down. And you might need to change the position of your neck. We're just standing with our hands, palms facing forward, looking up, looking up, and checking in with breath, checking in with your neck. And then begin to make circles. Just standing here at the top of your mat, make circles with your head. Going in one direction. And then we'll switch directions. So just, just pick one right now and make circles. Go as slowly as feels right to you. For most of us, some level of slowness, I mean anything I guess is some level of slowness, but not being in a hurry. Feeling it out. You know, I've said this before and it's certainly true here too. You push too hard, too far, and you hear that snap. Well, I, I can't help you. You've gone too far. So take it slowly. Assess when you get to when you get to the center next time, switch directions. Assess how it feels before you start, you know, hammering your body. Keep going, making the circles, noticing whatever it is that you're noticing in your neck. I notice my circles sped up a little bit. Relax your shoulders. And then one more rotation here, going in this direction. And then when your chin comes back down onto your chest, take your hands, interlace your hands behind your head. And, and find the place, just gently place your hands on the top of your head. You might not even want to, you, you, I, I, I don't want you pulling down. Let your elbows hang toward the floor, pointing toward the floor, toward the floor. And maybe you don't even have all of your arm weight on your neck if that feels too intense. <coughs> this isn't a contest and it's not an invitation for you to judge yourself, release. Roll your shoulders up and back and down. Roll your neck around. If that feels good, maybe wiggle, wiggle a little bit. I like wiggling. And then um, let's move into some sun salutations. Inhale your arms up. Grab your right wrist with your left hand. Reach up and pull over. Maybe pushing out your left hip as you pull your left arm over to the right. You can also have your right arm on your right thigh, whatever you like here. Coming back up and switching sides, grabbing your right wrist with your left hand or whatever version you're choosing. And leaning over to the left, pulling, extending, getting length, thinking about length, so going up first and then over. Let's do that again on the other side. Come on up, grab your right wrist with your left hand and reach up reach up so really kind of pull pull with your right hand to try to get some length you can even begin to start pulling over to the right side and and try to elongate go up first before you start going down so so concentrating on the length you may actually not go down as far and that's okay right release the idea that we're trying to get anywhere except inside our own bodies, inside the experiences that we're having. Release and switch sides. So as you grab your right wrist with your left hand, pull up and then start to really actually pull. Pulling as if you're trying to get space in between your rib cage, space between your pelvic bone and your bottom rib space for yourself, for your soul. Come on back up, release your hands, clasp your hands behind your back, and then pull and lift your heart. That's the only action here. Lift your heart, squeeze your shoulder blades together, maybe pull your hands away from your back. You could be lifting them up a bit if that works for you. 
perhaps feeling your uh, tricep muscles in the backs of your arms stretching here, chest opening, shoulders opening, release, inhale your arms up, bring your palms together overhead, and pull your hands into your heart. Pause, put your hands on your, your thumbs on your heart, your sternum. Put on your sternum, you can find your heart. My heart, I actually find a little bit like underneath my breasts, which is weird because, you know, when you do the Pledge of Allegiance, you put your hand on your heart. But maybe either place your hands in the middle of your sternum, or actually, you know, just put your hands in the middle of your sternum for now. We'll come back to that idea of actually finding your heart later. And then inhale your arms up. Sun A, dive forward. Flat back as long as you can, and then inhale to a flat back here, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold, take that length down, sweep your arms out and up, rise to standing, bring your hands overhead, bring your palms together, and pull your palms into your heart, and then allow your hands to come down and sweep back up again. Palms touch up head, overhead or not, dive forward. You can always pull your hands through heart center as you dive forward, keeping your back flat until you need to round it. Halfway lift, flatten your back. Exhale, hands down, step back. High plank position. Let's hold high plank. I'm going to give us a minute hold. So if you want, you could come down on your forearms. I know we're already into a... Uh, minute here we're already minutes already started so bonus i'll call that 15 seconds how about so plank is uh you know you probably see it in magazines a lot um the one exercise that if you're only going to do one exercise really hits a lot so um and if you're if you're not sure just google like a plank position and you'll see one of those you could pretty easily find an image one of those anatomical diagrams that has like the, the red colored in um, where the muscles are, the parts of your body, the muscles that are working are colored in in red. And plank really does uh, use a whole lot of muscles. So holding plank, we got five more seconds here for a one minute hold, give or take. And uh, now put your knees down. Put your knees down. If you were on your, your forearms, come on back to your hands. And with your knees down in a plank position, lower, lower chaturanga with your knees down and then come on back up. Let's do three of these. Knees down, lower chaturanga. Come on back up. We're doing push-ups. Knees down, chaturanga. Come on back up and then either choose knees on the floor to continue or tuck your toes, lift your knees. One more chaturanga and this time Upward facing dog, feel your stomach muscles stretching and then lift up downward facing dog. Ha, back to down dog. I think of this as home base in my yoga practice. And it, you, you know, when I first started doing downward facing dog, when I first started practicing yoga, it, it was very awkward, right? It felt weird. I had to figure out how to do it. I had to get my muscles used to it. And now this shape in my body feels like so it's very comfortable. That's why I call it home base. Coming back to home base. And I like to think about that as an analogy for everything that we, when we do something new, it's uncomfortable and we need to figure out how to do it. We need to get the muscle memory or the brain memory or whatever it is, you know. And then it becomes so much easier. So have compassion on yourself when you're doing something new. Look in between your hands, step your right foot forward, followed by your left, halfway lift, inhale, exhale, fold, fold, sweep your arms up, rise with a flat back, hands overhead, pull, the, put your palms together, and pull that goodness into your heart. Let your hands continue to drop by your sides and sweep your arms up, overhead, dive forward. Halfway lift, exhale, high plank. Inhale in high plank, we're not going to hold it. Lower chaturanga, 
Upward facing dog, down dog shape, down dog pose, position. If the words are triggering you, that's why I try to say shape. So I apologize if it's triggering, look in between your hands and step your left foot forward, followed by your right halfway lift, inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold, sweep your arms up, rise with a flat back, bring your hands together, bring your hands into your heart, inhale your arms up. Chair, Utkatasana. Let's do a balance here and, and a hip opener. In, in chair over here. So um, bring your right ankle on top of your left knee. And then of course you can bring your hands into your heart. You can bring your uh, torso down. And we're, we're not really warm. This is a shape we do often a little bit later. So you may not be able to bring your forearms all the way onto your right shin. You may, who knows. You could have your hands clasping onto your left shin. You can also be resting your hands maybe on a block. And notice where this is showing up for you today. It could be showing up in, in struggling with balance. If you're looking at me, that's what you're gonna see. It could be showing up in your glutes and your hips. Release, come standing, all the way to standing. Give a your left thigh a break, arms up, chair. And now let's switch sides. Bring your left ankle on top of your right knee. So your right knee is bent. You're in Utkatasana legs with your right an left ankle on your top, on top, not your ankle is on, on top of your knee. So it's above the knee and it's your ankle. So your foot is sticking out a little bit. I've always struggled with balance. I don't know why. And it's been a really humbling thing for me. You know, in almost every yoga class that I've ever done, every yoga training, every class that I've taught, it's rare that I hit the balancing shapes very well. And, and so that's been a real, a real journey, a real challenge. Release, stand up in grace. In, bring your hands together overhead and pull your hands back into your heart. In letting it go. Inhale your arms up. Chair pose. Right? Hold chair. How can I be a yoga teacher if I can't even balance? Do we need to put that stuff on ourselves? Forward fold. You could be a yoga teacher and stand in front of the room and not do the yoga at all. Halfway lift. I mean, hopefully you're doing yoga in your life. Forward fold. Step back, high plank, chaturanga, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Lift your right leg up, bend your knee, open your hip. Mm, circles, letting it feel good. Opening, maybe stacking your right hip on top of your left as best as you can, maybe looking up under your right armpit, and then bring your right leg back up, put your right leg down, switch side, just keeping it simple, lifting your left leg into the air, and then bend your left knee, stack your left hip on top of your right, maybe look underneath, and is it over, or under, underneath your right armpit, through your right armpit, left, left armpit, and then put your left leg back down. Look in between your hands and step your right foot forward and drop your left knee and tuck your left toes and rise up for crescent moon. Pulling, you can even use your hand to do this, pulling back your right hip crease a little bit and allowing your left hip to come forward. Your arms can be on your thigh, if that feels good to you. Your arms can be reaching up. And if, if you want to amp it up a little bit, keep your toenails on the ground and lift your knee. 
that you don't have to do this. This adds a lot of challenge. I learned this in a, from Baron Baptiste in a teacher training that I did with him, which was really hard, oh my goodness. And this is hard, you don't have to do it. If your knee was up, put it back down. Bring your hands down, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee, and step your left foot up to the top of your mat to meet your right. Halfway lift, exhale, fold, fold, Utkatasana, chair pose. And this time, shift your weight into your right foot. Actually, stand up, stand up, stand up. Um, so that you're, you're not in Utkatasana. Still shift your weight into your right foot and hug your left knee into your chest. Hug your left knee into your chest. And really pull it in. Squeeze. And then release. Let your left leg come out in front of you. And then teeter-totter back into airplane. Just kind of passing through airplane. And then place your left foot down and come on up this time into a full crescent lunge. So before we were in crescent moon with our left knee off the ground, now we're in crescent lunge with our left, no, with our left knee on. Now we're left knee off. Bring your hands into your heart. Hinge forward and twist. So I'm bringing you guys into this with your back knee up in this twist. Always feel free to put your back knee down that feels better to you, to your body, to your balance, All right? So the knee up challenges balance more, but the knee down, for a lot of people, allows you to twist more deeply. Come on back up, crescent, and then bring your hands down to the mat, step your right foot back, high plank, chaturanga, upward facing dog, to downward facing dog and take a moment for me right now I'm noticing my right hip a lot more than I'm noticing my left hip we just did a bunch of work on that so it's showing up maybe for you you feel something differently maybe you say oh yeah I, when you said that I noticed that too notice what you notice look in between your hands and step your left foot forward drop your right knee untuck your right toes and come on up, crescent moon. Pull your left hip crease back, allowing your, so your sacrum bone kind of centers a little bit more. You, when we put our left foot forward, we hinge our, our, our sacrum tilt to drop with the left side forward. So pulling the hip crease back evens that out a bit more. And if you want to lift your arms, if you want to lift your knee, you know, don't compare the two sides. You know, it might be wrong to do it on this side. Maybe you have an injury or, you know, condition or whatever that, that would impact you that makes it wrong to do it on this side. Maybe you're struggling more or finding it easier on this side if you're lifting up your knee. It's all good. Just let it be what it is. Drop your knee, bring your hands down, Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee, and step up to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Fold, fold. Sweep up, come all the way to standing. Bring your hands together overhead. Pull your hands into your heart. Shift your weight onto your left foot and hug your right knee in. Hug your right knee in. And really give your leg a squeeze, compressing the joint for a minute. And then right leg out in front of you, arms up, come back into airplane. Peter totter back into airplane. And then, hold airplane a moment. <laughs> Landing in this flying pose. And then step back, right foot back, arms up, crescent lunge. Same action of pulling your left hip crease back, right hip point moving forward. Pushing your right heel back. For some, a lot of times you'll hear this taught, straighten your back knee. If you want to straighten your back knee, do so. If it doesn't feel good, don't. Hands into your heart, hinge forward, twist. Mm 
breathing, letting the breath help the twist. Inhaling and lengthening, exhaling, maybe twisting further, deepening, letting any, any little shaking happen, body, you know, finding its finding proprioception, its place in, in the world. And then unwind, hands down, high plank, low plank, upward facing dog, two, downward facing dog. Drop your knees and untuck your toes. You may need to walk up a little bit further on your mat. Virasana, hero's pose. Heels spread wide enough so that you can get your butt in there. Really nice stretch for the front of our thighs. This might be enough for you. You might even need to be leaning forward a little bit to take some pressure off of your knees because it's also a pretty intense knee pose. Or maybe some of you are already laying on your back. Adjusting the shape to fit your body. And how about adjusting your mind to fit the shape? This is how I'm showing up today. Some days I show up differently. Some days I can lay on my back. Some days I sit straight up. Most of the time I don't need to lean forward. That's me. Right? But sometimes I need to lean forward. Sometimes I could go back a little bit. Just be fine with whatever it is. It's what I'm saying, right? It, it is what it is anyway. So you might as well accept it rather than fight it. And what if we could take that off the mat? What if we could take that off the mat? If you're on your back, make your way forward. Come on to hands and knees. Re-center yourself on your mat and make your way to high plank and from high plank to downward facing dog. Breathe in downward facing dog. Send your heels toward the mat. Push into your hands, elongating your arms, lifting your hips, up so you can kind of push into your hands to help get length. You're pushing the ground away from you with your hands, but you're sinking your heel toward the ground. Almost like the energy is coming from the earth into your palms, going up your arms, pulling your hips back a little bit, and then cascading down the backs of your legs, through your heels, back into the earth, this rebound energy. Look in between your hands and step to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Sweep your arms up. Rise to a standing position. Bring your hands together and bring your hands to your heart. Inhale your arms up. Utkatasana chair. Let's twist again. Hands into your heart. Sink low, left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Even out your knees. So when we do that, a lot of times the right knee is going to pull back and the left knee go forward. Again, it's the sacrum, sacrum flattening movement is, is the, or the, the pulling your knees back to be in line with each other flattens your sacrum. Release the twist. Gorilla. Separate your feet. About hip width distance. Palms up. Bend your knees as much as you need to to slide your hands, palms up, underneath your feet so far that your toes are tickling your wrist crease. So, so just do it. Just do it. Don't, I see this so many times. People don't want to bend their knees and they um, kind of slide their hands half under their feet. So maybe their toes are at the, at the end of their fingers where their palm starts or something. And for some people that might be the correct thing to do because you have an injury and you're protecting an injury. But I, I think a lot of people, I don't know why they don't do it. 
Maybe people think they're going to fall over. But just bend your knees. There's a lot of weight in the heel. That my, my knees need to be really bent to allow um, my hands to slide under that deeply. My stomach is on my thighs. Relax your neck. Breathe. It's called gorilla because we're trying to bend our elbows out to the sides. And then release. Hands come out. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold, fold. Put your hands on the ground. Step your left foot back. So you're in a runner's lunge position. And drop your left knee down. Untuck your left toes. Toe heel your left foot up toward the top of your, uh, sorry, left knee down, right foot up toward the top of your mat. Runner's lunge. Allowing your body to sink on the inside of your right leg. Maybe your elbows bend, maybe they bend deeply. Another hip opener here. If your neck feels um, stressed, you can put a block or stacked fists to support your head. There's also strengthening through the back of your neck here. So um, you, you can have your chin kind of on your chest. You can also be as, as if you're pushing, trying to make a double chin almost, um, pushing the back of your head toward the ceiling. Come on up onto your palms. We're gonna move into side plank. So you can keep your left knee on the ground and do that version of it, or you can tuck your left toes Lift your left knee and bring your right foot around in either version. Lift your right arm. Vasistasana, rainbow pose. Breathe. Bring your right bicep by your right ear, right palm facing the floor. Again, lengthening from the end of your toes, end of your feet, soles of your feet, that's what I'm trying to say through your fingertips, right arm back up, high plank, chaturanga, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Breathe in, down dog. Hmm. Look in between your hands, make your way to the top of your mat, halfway lift, inhale, exhale, fold, fold, chair, and from chair, step your right foot back, you're in crescent, drop your right knee, untuck your right toes, and come on into runner's lunge. Toe heel your left foot up toward the top left corner of your mat and sink down. Maybe you rest your head, maybe you don't. Wherever you are, unclench your jaw, release the corners, the muscles at the corners of your eyes. You might even uh, scrunch your whole face up. And then release it. Like just scrunch it up, make a funny face, and then release it. And really feel the difference. Feel your cheeks relax. Forehead relax. Un, un, undoing these habitual stress related things that we become so accustomed to. Come on up and make your way into side plank on the other side so you can keep your right knee down or right knee comes up. Lift your left arm, lift your left hip as best as you can. Lift out of your right shoulder, left bicep by your right, by your left ear. Fingers reaching, palm toward the floor. Breathe, breathe, arm back up. 
high plank. And just lift your hips, downward facing dog. Lift your right leg up. Bend your knee and bring it through low lunge. Spin your back foot flat. Warrior one, can you believe it? First warrior one of the whole class here and we're almost, well, I don't want to say, but we're not, we're more than halfway through. Warrior one. If you need to adjust your feet. Warrior one. Open, warrior two. Reach, extended side angle. So we're a lot warmer than we normally are when we do our first extended side angle. So notice whether you can hit the shape any differently. Maybe not. Maybe you feel more tired impacting your, 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 how you're showing up that way. Reverse your warrior. Keep your right knee tracking forward and your left arm reaching back. Oops, I meant right arm. Right knee forward, right arm back. I was thinking about my left arm, left hand on your left knee. And then windmill down. Step back to high plank. Make your way to downward facing dog. When you get to down dog, lift your left leg up. Low lunge to warrior one. Adjusting your feet, your stance as necessary. Noticing maybe, maybe you can feel, right? We've done a bunch of hip opening already before coming into warrior one. Maybe you can feel that. Open up warrior two. Find warrior two, making whatever adjustments you need. Reach forward, extended side angle. So a lot of times in the extended side angle, I'll say, take your hands, put them on your ribs, and maybe rotate. Rotating here in this shape, your left rib under you and opening through your right rib. And maybe you can hit that more deeply again, right? Because it's, it's, it's later in the practice. Reverse your warrior, left arm up, left knee stays forward. And windmill down. High plank. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward. Back foot flat. Warrior one. Open warrior two. Straighten your right knee. Trikonasana triangle. Crown of your head comes forward. You might look down at your right big toes. You might look up at your left palm or your left thumb rather. Trying to figure out the way to make this work for you, for your body, and for your mind. Come on up. Turn your feet parallel to each other, prasarita. So we're only gonna do one prasarita, so choose your hand position. Your hands can be out, you can clasp your hands behind your back, squeeze your shoulder blades together wherever your arms are, and with a flat back, come forward. Feet are either parallel or pigeon-toed. Grabbing onto your feet or letting your hands come off your back. Come on back up. Mm, warrior two, do the front of your mat. Reverse your warrior. And windmill down. Maybe noticing, right, the deeper, the, the depth, chaturanga, the downward facing dog, the depth with which we're able to go to these same shapes when we do them at the end, rather than the beginning. Left foot forward, right foot spins flat. Vira Bhadrasana one, Vira Bhadrasana two, left knee straight, 
make sure that your your right foot is as best as you can. You're you're trying to at least have the edge of your right foot parallel to the back of the mat. Reach forward. Maybe it's more of a 45 degree angle and tilt Trikonasana triangle. Try and open. Breathe, reach. And then come on back up. And now turn both of your toes um, out, heels in, and squat. First we're gonna take what's often called goddess pose, and it's also called horse. Bring your elbows by your sides. You can have your hands at your heart, or you can have your palms up facing in front of you. That's the version of goddess. You can have your elbows in by your sides and your arms out, kind of like those. Um, shoot, I just lost it. I think it starts with an H. I can't remember. But those ancient goddess statues that they're just very simple and round. And then keep on bending. Come forward, bring your hands toward the floor. And bend super deeply in your left knee so that your left heel comes off. And allow your right foot, your right toes can come off or your right foot can be on the ground, whatever works for you. But just start to get a deep groin stretch there. Some people can keep their right heel or left heel on the ground. Just whatever works for you. And then switch sides, crawl over to the other side. And maybe you want to experiment with, do you want your right heel up or down? Do you want your left toes up or down? But the invitation here to you guys is to get a nice deep groin stretch. Come on back, switch sides. You can have your hands at heart center. That works a little bit more of the musculature and the balance. Or if your hands are on the ground, you can perhaps relax more deeply and then stretch. So whichever one is more appropriate for you. Switch sides again. Right knee is bending. Come on back center. And warrior two, just make your way, stand up. Tee your arms out. Warrior two to the front of your mat. Nice, deep, reverse warrior. And windmill down. And step back, high plank. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Drop to your knees again. Um, camel. I'm trying to think of the Sanskrit word for it, but I cannot right now. Ustrasana, that's it. So you might want to tuck your toes. You might want to not tuck your toes. Keep your, start out here by being very mindful that your knees are, your hips are over your knees. And then keeping your hips over your knees. Maybe lift up. Lengthen through your spine, begin to lift your heart, begin to tilt your head back. Remember, we did that at the very beginning here. Begin to tilt your head back. Some people actually like to keep their chin sort of um, in line, so you're not actually tilting your head all the way back, but you're lifting, opening, creating a back bend here. Maybe your hands are on your low back with your elbows squeezing together. You can have your hands on your heels. Sometimes people lean back to um, grab their heels. And if you do that, then reposition your hips over your knees. For me, that's a little too intense sometimes. Hurts through my low back. And then wherever you are in camel, come on up. Sit down onto your heels for a moment. You can also come into a, a restorative child's pose, bija pose. Arms up, hands up, palms up by the sides of your body, forehead on the mat, knees together. So we're going to do another camel. I used to be able to do what I'm about to tell you. I used to be able to, from this position, grab my heels and then come up and open into camel. I can't do that anymore. 
you might be able to. So if you want to give it a try, give it a try. Otherwise, just come on up, normal way, stand on your knees, and one more camel. Opening through your heart, right? Remember back bends are heart openers. So if, if like me, you're not very back bendy, then, it, 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 then I, I like thinking about it as a heart opener. It feels like it takes the, takes the goal out of it, sort of, and I know I always say there's no goal, but it, it's hard to really get out of that mindset. Come on up. Put your hands down on the floor in front of you, and step back. Make your way to downward facing dog from high plank. And when we get to high plank, or I mean down dog, pigeon. Bring your right knee behind your right wrist, top of your left knee, maybe move it back a little bit, and come on into pigeon. It's hard, right? I talk about it all the time. Yoga is not a contest, it's not about what the position looks like, but it's hard to step out of that mindset. It's hard not to mm, like evaluate our own worth. You know, I don't know why I don't have a very bendy back. I don't have a very bendy back, so I've never been that person coming up in a beautiful arching back bend or a beautiful bow pose, which we're going to do after we do these. Does it make me a, a, a worse person that my bow doesn't look like a teardrop or that my, my, my wheel, my back bend doesn't look like a rainbow? No, of course it doesn't make me a worse person, but it's, it's awfully tempting to go there and believe me, I have sometimes gone into that place of judgment because that person looks better. But trust me, it's, it's, a, it's a much more pleasant way to practice yoga when you can give yourself a break and not think that. Come on up. And we're gonna switch sides. But you know what, let's sit over onto your right hip, swing your left leg around, and let's do Janusha so right knee is bent, sole of your right foot on the inside of your left thigh. Lift your arms up and bow forward over your left leg. Maybe you can grab onto your left foot. Maybe you can grab onto anything. Some people can rest their elbows on the ground. You can look for length. Or you know what? You can start to round here. Whatever feels good to you. Honoring, honoring what your body's asking for. You might try one and then the other. So yeah, this one feels better today. And then you stay there. And come on up. And you can go to down dog if you would like or simply Bend your left knee and set your send your right foot around behind you coming into pigeon on with your left leg forward. So we practice these things on the yoga mat. This is what to me is so profound about my my, my yoga practice and what it, my anybody the the the, the opportunity blah my god okay in everybody's yoga practice we have this opportunity to see how we're showing up see how we talk to ourselves when we're in the various postures as we're moving through does the way I talk to myself feel good do I like the what I'm saying to myself and it doesn't have to be like a cheerleader, like, yay, good job, look at you. Maybe it's just, you know, hey, here I am in this shape. Here's how my body's showing up. I'm doing my best. All right, good job me. You know, but maybe it's something like, oh, my God, look at that other person. She's doing it so much better than I am, whatever that would even mean. Or maybe it's when I did this yesterday, I did it so much better. Or my God, here's the worst one. When I did this 20 years ago, I did it so much better. And then you say, wow, how is that serving me? 
Well, it's, it's serving me in a way that's making me feel bad. And is that the, the, what I want to be doing in myself? And so then you can begin to change that pattern on the yoga mat. And we practice that. We practice changing that pattern on the yoga mat. Here's the beauty of that. Sit up. Sit over on your left hip. Janusha Shasana on the other side. So bring your right leg around. Put the sole of your left foot somewhere on your right thigh. And bow forward. So the beauty of that is that you then have the opportunity, once we've practiced it a bunch of times on the mat, and we get pretty good at it, we begin to take it off the mat. So we begin to notice that internal dialogue we have with ourselves, um, and we can start to shift it. You know, I even, and it's an ongoing process, just like it's a yoga practice, a meditation practice. This is a practice too. The other day, I, I was in my car, I can't remember what I did exactly, but I said, oh, Debbie, you're so stupid. And then I caught myself. Well, that was a stupid thing to do, but I'm not stupid. And it wasn't even a stupid thing to do. It was, I forget, you know, a mindless thing to do or a silly thing to do. But catch yourself. Catch the way you talk to yourself. Why do I need to tell myself I'm stupid? First of all, I'm not. But that also is just mean. Come on up to a seated position. And I promised you bow, so I want to get there. Come on back and just make your way onto your stomach. Lay down on your stomach. And bend your knees. Grab your feet from the outside. And then kick. Kick into bow. Begin to lift everything that you can. So some people that you'll see featured in magazines look like a teardrop in this shape. Their toes are touching their head. And it is, it's beautiful. And we do want to keep our spines flexible. And we do want to be opening our shoulders, unhunching our shoulders. We want to take care of our spinal column. Good Lord, it houses our nervous system. But looking like a teardrop shape doesn't do that any better. It is simply more accessible to some people than others. Release and lay on your stomach and turn your head to one side. Turn your head to the other side. And what we're going to do now is for the next two minutes until 1 p.m. be in Shavasana. So you can lay in Shavasana on your back, on your stomach, I meant to say. On your stomach, or you can flip over onto your back. So give yourself these next two minutes. Stay present. If you want to clench your jaw, if you unfurrow your brow, Whatever might be causing tension, unnecessary tension, right? It's impossible to release everything that creates tension. Life is full of challenges and maybe even difficulties. You know, like they say in Buddhism, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Right? And why, why is that? It's because the suffering is our engagement with the pain. And that doesn't mean pain doesn't hurt. Pain does hurt. Pain of an injury, the pain of a loss. It hurts. And we're allowed to feel the pain. But we also are allowed to give ourselves permission to move into it, through it, and transform it. It transforms us, and we are transformed by it, but we also allow ourselves to move past it. We don't continue to mourn a person as deeply as time passes as we mourned them 
initially. You know, that's moving through it. It doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. But the suffering would be the, the, the continued re-engagement with that pain. It's all a process. It's all an evolution. Give yourself grace on the journey. Don't expect that there's even any destination. And if the destination was being able to touch your toes and you got there, then mazel tov, that's wonderful. But probably there'll be days where you can't touch your toes again. And you're still a fine person. Just come to a moment of gratitude. You can make your way to seated if you want to stay on your back. Choosing to come from a place of abundance, choosing to come from a place where you recognize that you have enough. I'm so fortunate in my life in so many ways, including the ability to share this time with you virtually now and someday soon again in person. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day and week. Namaste.